Hello everybody and welcome to how to design a Vivaldi antenna in HFSS. My name is Chris and before we get started I'd like to say a couple things. First is I'm just getting over a cold so I might sound a little bit congested and two is more of a warning. Uh, so I am no expert in antenna design. I recently graduated with a bachelor's in electrical engineering from UC Davis and during my senior year I took one quarter's worth of antenna design classes. It's only 10 weeks. And within that class, uh, we learned how to design, simulate uh, simple antennas in HFSS, and basically it's just the basics of uh, how antennas work. Uh, so the reason why I was introduced to the Vivaldi antenna is because for my senior design project, we had to build a radar system. And one of my teammates, had the idea of using a Vivaldi antenna. It's like, guys, look at this Vivaldi antenna. We can design it on a PCB, which we already know how to do through HFSS. We can simulate it. It has high gain and huge bandwidth. And for our radar system, we had to sweep through a set of frequencies. So this one seemed to do the trick. So initially, like most people, they would be like, okay, what is a Vivaldi antenna? What does it look like? And this is what the Vivaldi antenna looks like. You have three things. Well, actually you have four things, but you can't really see it. So you have these two thin copper sheets and they sit on top of this dielectric substrate. And right here at the bottom, you can't see it, there's a microstrip transmission line that feeds in the signal. And then right here, you sort of see an idealized um, radiation pattern that will come out of the antenna. So now we need to give credit where credit is due, and that is to Mr. Hassan. Initially, when I started researching how to design a Vivaldi antenna, I ran across this video, and what he does in this video is he explains the theory on why the Vivaldi antenna radiates. So I'm gonna quickly go through what he says in that video. And as you can see here, you can think of the Vivaldi antenna as a waveguide. Here's our waveguide. And if you send an electric field through the waveguide, it's just going to guide that electric field down the waveguide. But if you take both ends of the waveguide and taper them open like this, and you set this tapering length to lambda over 2, and then also this distance to uh, half wavelength, then the electric field, in theory, will pop off the antenna and radiate into the air. And so this curve right here, uh, we can model it as an exponential. Uh, if you read some research papers, uh, there are other uh, more complicated exponential functions that you can use that can better uh, model the curve or uh, just change the nature on how it curves, where it might start out slowly and then uh, quickly curve out like that or uh, there's just different mathematical functions that you can find for that. Uh, also Mr. Hazan has a full video on how to design a Vivaldi antenna. Uh, so some of you are thinking well why are you going to do this whole video if he's already made one and that is because uh, he has his video designed in CST which is a uh, totally different interface. It, it's like HFSS but it's different. And for beginners, that could be confusing. Also, uh, there are some really important design tips uh, that he totally skips over um, that will really help in terms of simulations. Uh, so hopefully I can better explain those. So with that said, let's get started. So let's get started with the antenna design. So what you're looking at here is a footnote I made at the end of my class on how to design this antenna. And this figure right here actually comes from uh, Hassan's video that he made for designing the antenna. And what he does is he creates a dimensional layout of all the different parameters you're gonna need to take into account when designing this antenna. Um, so take note, every single one of these measurements, they're all for the copper parts of the antenna as the dielectric is really just sandwiched in between the microstrip line and the copper. With that said, let's get started on explaining what 
actually each one of these measurements are and what they what they mean and represent. So starting with the tapering length, this TL right here. All this length here is uh, the length of this curve projected on the side of the antenna. And as I said before, that part should be half a wavelength. Before we move on, I want you all to take a quick note. Every single one of these measurements, they are not going to be set in stone. What I'm doing is I'm going to explain how I think the theory works and why they're measured the way they are. But when you get into HFSS and you start designing your antenna and maybe your S11 curve is not where it needs to be or your gain needs to be a little bit higher, you are going to be changing almost every single one of these to see how it affects your design. So this is the ideal theory way of creating the antenna at the start, but they will change in the future. So moving on. The next important thing I want to point out, this red rectangle, this is the microchip feed line coming in through the bottom. Uh, ignore this part. I'll explain what these mean, but in our design that we make, it's not going to be fed through the right or left side of the antenna. We're going to um, feed it through the bottom in an L shape. So the next part that I want to explain is this quarter wave uh, micro strip length right here. Um, and to do that, I'm going to hop over to my iPad. To understand why this is a quarter wavelength, we have to go back to the basics of an oscillating wave. So if you take a look at this wave right here, we see that it is one wavelength. So this is lambda. So if you have this signal, um, you excite the microstrip. The signal comes here. Once it reaches this point, we have a quarter wave to go. We have a quarter wave like that is going to be pi over two. Okay. So if we take a look right here, the wave travels down, okay? That means its phase is going to change by pi over two. We see that at that point, okay? Once it meets the end, it's going to reflect and bounce back. So as it's bouncing back right here, uh, at this point, I should say, right here, it hits this end, right when it bounces back, it's going to be pi out of phase from the reflection. It's gonna do a 180 degree phase shift. So, so far we have pi over two plus this pi out of phase that it went from reflecting. And then after it reflects, it's going to change another pi over two uh, length because remember this is a quarter wave. Uh, so if you add all these things up, all these distances, you're end up you're gonna end up getting two pi. And why that is so important is once the signal meets back at this point, it's going to add up in phase. So that's really why we want this to be a quarter wave. And remember this point right here, why it's so significant is that is going to be where the electric field meets the antenna and that's where it's going to be bouncing back and forth. So that's why this point is so important. So the next length that I'm going to go over is the micro strip length. Um, for our design it's going to be different but that's what this ML stands for. This MW that is the micro strip width and that basically makes up the feed line system. So oh yeah and this micro strip width that's going to be designed in ADS um, where we calculate it based off our frequencies. There's a tool in there called line calc and we'll get into that later. Um, the next important link moving back to the top of the copper is the slot length. And this slot length is, uh, it's gonna be a rectangle. Well, the length is going to be this, this distance right here. And that's going to be separate from the tapering. So you have the tapering length and then you have the slot. So that's what that SL stands for. Um, <clears throat> right here, we have a quarter wave slot. That's gonna be the distance from the micro strip uh, to the end of the slot. Um, 
try to use the same logic to understand why that's a quarter wave um, based off of what I said before right here. Um, this 2S, what did I say the S was? Yeah, so that's going to be the slot width right here, just that distance. And then um, this EXT, that is the distance from the end of the antenna to the end of the slot. And I think that makes up most of everything. Uh, but you will end up making more variables if you want uh, to control your antenna. And I'll show you all of that in ADS or HFSS. So naturally, after you find out what all of the links are and what they mean, now you're probably thinking, OK, well, how big do they need to be to make this antenna work? And like I said before, well, for one, that's going to depend on what frequencies you're operating at. Two, you're going to build it and make certain uh, lengths and widths at the beginning. But really what's going to happen is you're going to tune your design. You're going to tune almost every single measurement or each parameter of your design. Uh, so here in my little report, I made basically the starting distances of what I thought a beginner should use for their design. Um, so for the tapering length in the video that Hassan explained, that should be a lambda over two. Uh, the microstrip length, don't worry about this one. Uh, the microstrip width, that'll be determined by ADS. Uh, for the quarter wave match, I explained that should be lambda over four. The slot length, you're gonna be tuning this a lot, trust me, to get your S11 curve right. And that will be lambda over two. Um, the quarter wave length slot, lambda over four. Um, the slot width, you can start that out at one millimeter and then the extension from the end of the slot to the end of the antenna, um, I started that out at about one millimeter. Um, but just remember, all of these will most likely change, except I didn't really vary the microstrip width. Um, so there's that. So with any engineering design, you're going to have design constraints. And for the antenna, there's really two constraints or types of constraints you have to worry about. You have your operating constraints and then your physical constraints. So for the operating constraint, the biggest one is the frequencies of operation. So what's the bandwidth that you have to operate this frequency? Because you don't want to be stepping on other people's bands that they're paying for. Uh, two is the physical constraints and the physical constraints come directly from the PCB manufacturer. So to find these out, you have to determine what PCB manufacturer you're going to be going through, go to their website, and that is where you're going to find all the different types of specifications for the different types of PCBs that they offer to have fabricated. Uh, so the first one, um, for a typical Vivaldi antenna, uh, you can just have a two layer PCB, it's the cheapest one. And what this two layer means is just how many layers of copper there are on the PCB. So for ours, you have the top and you have the bottom. The next one is the copper thickness. This is important, it'll be put into HFSS. That's just the thickness of the copper. Uh, the total board thickness, uh, you can just subtract this copper thickness from the total board thickness. And I think you will have the substrate thickness. Uh, so that can be found on the website. It will be put in HFSS. Uh, the next one is the substrate material. And the substrate material has a relative permittivity. And this is very important. If you mess up or input the wrong numbers in HFSS, when you get your, uh, your dimensions right and you send it off to have be fabricated, it'll come back. It might not even, it will not work the way that you intended it to. So definitely get that part right into HFSS. And then the last one is the maximum size that the machines can manufacture uh, their PCB. So this is gonna be the physical area or the maximum physical area that the machines can fabricate for you. So those are most of the constraints. Okay. Now we are at the moment we have all been waiting for. We are in HFSS and we are about to design the Vivaldi antenna. And the approach that I'm gonna use, there's many ways to do this, but I'm gonna make that exponential curve first and then I'm gonna put a rectangle behind it and basically just cut it out. 
and those two sides were going to serve as our metal plates. So initially when I tried to do this, I'm not even going to get into how frustrated I was at, at first I was trying to use a line and then like connect all those lines and then create some type of service behind it and use it as a cutout. But that is not what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to create an equation based surface and right now I'm giving you guys the keys this is how you this is the hardest part after this it's freaking it's cake you, you're, you're gonna be able to design your antenna after this so what you're gonna want to do is you're basically using uh, you're creating parametric equations and when I got here I was like ugh, gotta go back to my calc 3 understand how this works but don't worry I'm gonna give you guys the keys so if you do want to actually know how this works I'm not going to go into it. You can go uh, look up on YouTube parametric equations. Go to Professor Leonard, the homie, got me through Calc 3. And uh, he'll explain how parametric equations work and how you're going to use them. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to keep this as just underscore U. You have to use the same parameters that are in uh, these parentheses right here. So keep it as underscore U. And then we're going to call this s times underscore v and then we're going to multiply that by an exponential and raise that to underscore u times the rate it's basically the same equation i showed in the previous video all right we're going to make this a two-dimensional surface we'll thicken it later it makes it easy keep this as zero and then we're going to start u going from zero to TL. TL is going to be our tapering length, so half a wavelength. Oh yeah, and for this example, I'm just going to make up numbers. So for you guys, just use your calculated values and you should be good. And those calculated values are just based off your frequencies. And then for V, we're going to go from 1, negative 1 to 1. And boom. So I added in like this parameter S and uh, rate and TL, but I didn't define them. So now I have to define them. Uh, so we're going to call S, we'll just call this, because this was the slot width, uh, we're just going to call this 1, make it a, a length, millimeters is fine, the rate is unitless, we're going to just call it like 10, and then TL, let's go for like 50, and this is a length, okay, boom, and voila, this is... It actually looks like trash, but the reason it looks like trash is because, how do I get here? Because our rate is trash. So increase this rate a little bit. And this is why you want to parameterize everything. Boom, we have a Vivaldi curve, exactly what we want. We can make this even more. Oh, don't want to go that big. Uh, 60, boom, perfect. This took me forever, but once you get to this point, it's a piece of cake. One thing I wanted to mention is that this S right here, this represents the slot width. Um, so we're going to put the slot right at the end of um, the, the tapering part. And because we are multiplying this S by the V, and the V just goes from negative 1 to 1, uh, we're basically just multiplying by one. Uh, this length is always going to be the slot. So because everything's parameterized, we're not going to have to worry about once we adjust the slot length, if like this will change. The only thing that will change is this distance here, how wide or small this is. So um, don't have to worry about changing that. Next, we're going to add a slot to the tapered section of the antenna and to do that all you have to do is get a little rectangle plop it on there the size really doesn't matter and then from there you can go into <coughs> the settings and the sizes and here the only tricky part here that I had to figure out make that position S and then for the length of the slot, we're going to call this SL for slot length. Uh, we'll just call that 25. 
and then for here it's going to be 2 multiplied by s in the slot just being half the slot width okay oh I forgot one thing and you'll see how its position uh, its position is on the positive side of the x-axis so we have to change that to negative negative s l and that should position it in the right place boom and the last step we want to combine these together so all you gotta do is select I will pull down control and select rectangle and uh, the taper section of the antenna and just click unite and that makes it one object next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down a rectangle uh, oops, don't have to worry about the size and I'm going to rename this section of the antenna. We're going to call that gap. And the reason we're going to call it gap is because eventually this is going to cut out of the rectangle and this gap uh, will define the two sections of the metal plates. Um, so now we have to define the dimensions of the rectangle. Um, took me a little bit to figure this out. Uh, I'm not going to explain it, but if you test in your own values, you should be able to understand why the values are the way they are. So I'll fast forward through this. This extension here, remember, it's just the tiny part at the end of the antenna. That's what the EXT stands for. And this should be the correct dimension, so we'll click OK. And there you have it. Should be an equal divide right down the middle. Now what we need to do is we need to make this gap right here. So to do that, all you do is you hold down Control, and you select the gap and the rectangle. And you want to hit Subtract. And you want to make sure you're subtracting the gap from the rectangle. So you click OK, and now we physically have our gap. But we still have one more problem because this is just a sheet. It's a two-dimensional object, and this section is the copper. So the copper has to have a physical thickness that you get from the PCB manufacturer. So to create that thickness, all you do is you go to Edit, and you can go to Surface and you can go to thicken sheet and the thickness that I had was 0 0.049 you click OK and you can see here it moved into the solid section and just to verify that you can look at the front and we have a thickness of 0 0.049 I made one slight error we actually want to um, have everything in terms of variables so this copper thickness we can call it C thickness, click OK, and then we'll call that value 0 0.049. And we're good. So we have now created the top copper section of the antenna. Uh, we have two more sections to make. We have the copper uh, feed line on the bottom of the antenna, and then we have the substrate that's sandwiched in between the middle. So our next step will add that uh, substrate and to do that all you have to do is create a box. Uh, dimensions don't matter at this point and um, might as well make this a different color too. So let's make this let's make it uh, we'll make this pink, we'll make this Let's see, copper's orange. Okay. That's good enough. All right. So from here, all we have to do is input the correct dimensions. And I'm going to fast forward through this. Any new variables that I add, I'll explain. Um, so just trust that everything that I did was right. These should be the correct dimensions for the substrate. The X and Y coordinates 
those should be, or not the coordinates, but the dimensions, those should be the same as the copper because the substrate has to lay um, right beneath the copper. They have to be right on top of each other. The only difference is this substrate thickness, and I call that sub T. Uh, you define it right here, and then since you want it to be beneath the copper, you set it at minus sub T, and that should get us right where we need to be. So we can see it sits right on top of that copper there. And then, let's see the top view. Yeah, perfect. So that's exactly what we want. Okay, so the last part that we need to make goes on the bottom of the antenna, and that's the micro strip transmission line uh, feed line. So that's gonna go like an L shape. It's gonna start at the end, and it's gonna go like this. And that's how the signal is going to get to the antenna. Uh, so that's really easy to design. We're really just going to do two rectangles, unite them, and then we'll thicken the sheets. Um, but what matters is the width of that micro strip transmission line. And to find out that width, there's a tool in Advanced Design Systems ADS called Line Calc. And I'm sure on the internet you can find calculators for micro strip widths, but this is the one I'm going to use because I'm familiar with it. Um, so if you're in ADS, you can just create a new schematic. And I go to line calc here. And we have to make sure we're in micro strip uh, transmission line. And you can see that schematic right here. And then once we're here, this is just a list of all of the um, the data it needs to input in order to get the correct uh, width and lengths. So I'll just explain what each of these are. So this ER, that's the um, the relative di dielectric constant. Um, so that's going to be the the substrate permittivity. This is just this is the ideal permittivity. Keep that as one H. I'm pretty sure that's the thickness of the substrate. This U, keep it really big. H U, just keep it. Uh, big, don't have to worry about that. This is going to be your thickness of the copper, T, the conductivity of the copper, that should be like 5.96. Tan D, um, I forgot what that was, I think it's called like the loss tangent. And then rough, um, or yeah, rough, that's the ideal surface roughness. Uh, don't have to worry about that, just keep it at zero. Um, so depending on what your frequency is, for me my frequency was like 2.4, that was like right in the middle of between what I was sweeping through. And then the only other thing you really got to change uh, should be a 50 ohm match. I'm assuming it's 50 ohm match for whatever system you're designing. And then uh, this is going to be your electrical length um, in degrees. So if you want a quarter, it'd be 90 degrees. And then all you got to do is click uh, synthesize and it will output um, a width and length. And all of this is in mils. I could have changed it to millimeters, but we can just convert it. Um, so we'll just keep it in mils for now. But that's how you use line calc. Uh, just got to make sure you input all the correct values. So I'm just going to make up a value for the width just to show you how to do it in ADS, um, or to do it in HFSS. So uh, we'll delete all that, go back here. And we'll start designing our feed line. So now that we have the micro strip widths, we're going to create the feed line system. And like I said earlier, all we're really going to do is we're going to create a rectangle like that. And then we're going to create a rectangle like this. And take those two rectangles. Oops. Take those. And we're going to unite them. So they become one. And then really what we're going to do, we're just going to move this over here. And that's how you're going to do the feed line system. But the way I'm going to do it, and I'll show you guys, is I'm going to make uh, variables for all of these uh, lengths and widths and where to place them. And then you'll be able to easily adjust uh, the length of this and the length of uh, like the length of this side, the length of this side, to see what will give you uh, the best uh, return loss and gain. So um, I'm going to call this rectangle right here 
the one being the input into the antenna. I'm um, call that the inline. And this, the one that's actually feeding the antenna, the signal right here, I'm going to call that the feed line. And I'm going to show you the parameters for where they're positioned for each rectangle. Uh, and I'll fast forward through that. All right, so I fast forwarded. We have our inline right there, and we have our feed line right here. So first we're going to take a, take a look at the position of the inline. Uh, these are the correct dimensions and variables that you'll need to use. The only new thing here, I added the microstrip width, which is what we calculated in ADS. And the other thing I added was a nudge. <laughs> and I called it a nudge just because uh, you can change this length. All the nudge is, is a, uh, well, let me show you. If I change the nudge, if I make it smaller, I'll make it like five. It moves it in more. So all the nudge is, this is zero. I nudge it over this way a little. And you can vary this distance to see how it affects your, uh, your return loss, your S11. So that's all the nudge is. Next, we'll take a look at the feed line system. And here's the correct parameters and dimensions positions for that. Uh, if you remember, um, at the beginning of the videos, I mentioned the quarter wave match, and we needed this distance right here. Um, oh wait, we needed a quarter wave match right here, and that's where that factor comes from. Uh, other than that, the rest are all familiar variables. So. With that said, we can take our two feed lines and we can unite them. Once we unite them, uh, there's still a two-dimensional surface, so then again we need to thicken the sheet. Um, where was it? Edit, surface, thicken sheet. And then this is copper. It's the second copper layer on the bottom. So. We can put that in there, and then that goes over to this side. It's going to be called feed line. And then we also need to put it directly below the, uh, the antenna. So right now, it actually looks like it's right below. Oh, no, it's in the wrong spot. Because if you take a look... Uh, where's our other copper plate? Yeah, it needs to go on the bottom. And right now it's on the top. So to put it on the bottom, uh, we can just go, oops, not there. Great rectangle position. We have to subtract this distance and this distance to set it at the bottom. So to do that, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. We need to subtract the substrate thickness, and we also need to subtract the um, copper thickness. Okay. Let's see where that puts us. Okay. So that was one. We had to do it for both. And that should put it at the bottom. So let's see if we take a look at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom of the antenna. Uh, we can take a look. So there's our feed line. There's our substrate. And there is our copper. Everything's there. Okay, so we have our whole antenna built. There's just a couple more things we have to add. So we have our feed line, and then we have our substrate, and we have our two copper plates. That's the whole antenna. Uh, you can see we're operating on, we designed this whole antenna on the XY plane, okay? And what we want to do next is we want to create an excitation between the feed line system and the two copper plates on top. And we're going to do that using a lumped port. 
we're going to set it right here. And you cr create the lump port with, uh, with a rectangle. The thing is, we're operating on the XY plane, and we don't want to be there. We actually, this plane right here, I think it's, what is it? Yes, the YZ plane. So we want to connect the edge of this guy to the edge of this guy. Um, and really dimensions don't matter because I'm going to give you the correct variables for it. Um, but we're going to want to make that a lumped port. So let's go in and add the correct dimensions. So we want to position this guy at negative S S L. Actually, I'll fast forward through this and then uh, show you after the same time. Okay, so these are the correct dimensions and variables for the excitation. Um, I made it blue just so you could see it better. Let's see. Oh, I'll zoom out there. And there it is. So you have our feed line right on the bottom, and we have the copper plate on top, and it connects both of those. Um, so the next part is we want to right click and we want an we want to assign a lumped port excitation to it. Um, I want to keep that at 50 ohms, just click next, and you want to define an integration line. To define the integration line, let's look at it from I think the back. Let's see, yeah, there you go. And the integration line we can go um, from, we just want to go from the bottom to the top. And once we define that line, uh, we should be good there. And that's it. The last thing you have to do to simulate, if you want to simulate, what you'll have to simulate, is you create your open region, your frequency, click your radiation, OK. And we are basically done you are ready to simulate your antenna. Uh, so that is how you design the Vivaldi antenna. Um, we're not done yet because I have some pro tips for you for simulation and also just some uh, words of advice I want to give you for trying to increase the gain and improve your S11 curve. All right, so the first tip I want to give you guys is before you start the tuning process, you want to prioritize what uh, characteristics of your antenna you want uh, to perform the best. So for example, my radar system, I had to target and uh, detect objects. So I wanted as much power in as narrow of a beam as possible. So for me, I needed really high gain. Um, so that should have been the first characteristic I should have been tuning for. Uh, but I made the mistake of tuning for S11 first. And what I did was, initially I went to my S11 and I created an S11 curve that had about five gigahertz worth of bandwidth. And I was like, oh wow, this is great. And then I would go straight to my gain. I'm like, let's see what the gain is. And it was three, <laughs> which I was like, okay, well that's not going to work. So what I ended up doing was I had to sort of start from, not start from scratch, but I had to go to my gain and I had to figure out how to make the gain a lot bigger. And the way I found to make the gain a lot bigger was to increase the size of the antenna. So what I ended up doing was I changed the tapering length and the slot length. You can vary both of them, but if you uh, like triple this in size, you'll see it still sort of maintains the same shape. But one of the tips I found was that this curve, no matter where I sort of placed it on the side, um, it still maintained about the same gain. I sort of found the optimum point to be somewhere around like 25, like somewhere around here, sort of like halfway between there. So what I noticed was I had all this extra space 
and I also had the design constraint of 50 square inches. That's as much as the PCB manufacturer could fabricate. So I had to keep that in mind. So I was like, okay, what if I cut these edges off? So that's like, that's what I did. I created two rectangles uh, that were symmetric about the x-axis, and I just cut them off. And I found after cutting that off that it actually improved my gain even more. I was like, oh, wow, like I got less space to design my PCB on, and I got more gain. I was like, okay, perfect. And then after reading a couple research papers, I found that you can make designs in this copper or even inside the curve, you can add copper to it, and that can also increase your gain. Um, so the one I ended up using was, uh, I in made some circles. Um, actually, I'll just show you. Let me switch over to my other project and I can show you what I did. So this is one version of the Vivaldi antenna that I designed. And I actually left out one important part within the last videos. You have to assign <laughs> materials for each, uh, for each layer. So for the copper, you have to make sure it's under copper. Um, for the substrate, for me it was FR4 proxy. Uh, and you have to make sure you assign the right uh, relative dielectric constant. Gotta make sure that part's right. Um, so make sure you assign each materials to uh, each layer. Um, so back to what I was saying about uh, cutting off this extra space. I think this was it, so yeah, okay. So what I did was to get rid of this extra space, I literally just created two symmetric rectangles, subtracted them, and that's how I got uh, to this point. And then you also see these circles right here. Let me see which one that was. I think it was this last one here. Um, for this, I literally made, I just made two ellipses. I think used this tool, made sure they were symmetric, just typed in the right measurements, placed them there, subtract, and I found that also improved my gain. So um, those are two tips that could help you improve your antenna design. It worked for me. Your design might be a little different. Uh, uh, after talking to some other people, they found that uh, if you add a comb uh, type of design to it, or just a bunch of little rectangles through here, sort of like a hair comb, uh, I heard that's a really good way to increase your gain. Um, so that's another another tip. The next tip I'd give you guys is when tuning your antenna, you're gonna vary m almost all of these results. And remember, um, depending on how you prioritize your characteristics you want from your antenna, um, you might change different parameters differently. Um, but for gain, remember, the bigger the antenna, the better. And if you're going for that, uh, definitely make your antenna bigger first. And I found an uh, easy way to do that is increase uh, the tapering length and then increase this. This will increase the back side. If you, this is the slot length. If you increase this, that will increase the back side a lot more. Uh, I found this was also good for changing uh, the return loss. So uh, definitely your S11 curve, you can modify that one, that one. Um, surprisingly, also the, um, the feed line from the bottom, that also had a pretty big effect on the return loss. Also, a little tip with this feed line, you're not going to want it super close to uh, Let's see, you're not going to want it super close to the curve just because, so you're going to want this input over to the edge a little bit because most likely you're going to have an SMA connector uh, connecting to this antenna, at least I did. And initially I had it pretty close to this input and that, that physically, it has three pins and we would have had to chop one off if I didn't modify my design. So just to ignore any interference between there, uh, move this nudge, move it somewhere over here, and you can tune from there. That'll also change your S11 curve. But yeah, you'll you're not gonna end up sticking with the idealized values. Just um, tune as you go and as you see fit. Uh, another tip: log down your good simulations. If you get some good results, log them down because you're gonna be changing these 
all the time and uh, you want to make sure you have those good results that you can refer back to. I think one of the last tips I have for you guys is uh, once you get your antenna set in stone for one frequency because you're going to be tuning for one frequency make sure you do a, a frequency versus gain check because you might have like really high gain at one frequency and then lower gain at another and it turned out for my design uh, actually I'll, I'll show you a screenshot so here's a gain simulation for my antenna and at zero degrees you can see its maximum is around 10.4 uh, thing is if I was simulating my antenna at 2.4 gigahertz but it wasn't until the end that I did the gain versus frequency simulation because it takes a really long time to do this one and uh, you can see as the frequency increases my gain ends up going up all the way to around 12.5 so I could have got a higher gain um, if I designed my radar system around 3 gigahertz but at the end of the day it worked so that's all that matters so don't forget to check this another piece of advice I wanted to give you guys had to do with the reason why we didn't feed the antenna like Hassan did from the side of the uh, from the side of the antenna rather we went through the bottom uh, and the reason for that is because if you modify this let's say 175 you're gonna be changing this length right here and that will have an effect as the um, wave propagates down the microstrip um, it'll have an effect or I noticed an effect on the S11 curve and one of my buddies actually simulated his that way and uh, he just kept getting mixed results every time and he couldn't figure out what was wrong is because every time he would change this tapering length this length would also change so the the way he was feeding his system was changing so definitely feed your antenna through the bottom last but not least uh, I wanted to show you the finished product this is the antenna that we had made for our radar system and then here is our full radar system and that will conclude this video in the next video I'm gonna show you how to take the antenna and export it into a Gerber file through ADS and then once you have that Gerber you'll be able to send it off to the PCB design manufacturer and have it fabricated so thanks for watching